Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to the channel. Now, if there is one thing we have learned about Vince McMahon in the last few years, there is one thing he doesn't really care for, and that is tag team wrestling. However, recently it has come to light that there is one thing he dislikes even more than tag team wrestling, and that is women's tag team wrestling. The women's tag team belts are still in their infancy, but they do not feel as important as they should do. After debuting in a very underwhelming Moment of Bliss segment, mainly because we saw this segment week after week on Raw in the early part of this year, we had the inaugural match at Elimination Chamber. Now, Tag Team Elimination Chamber matches are a little bit awkward, shall we say. Um, this match was a fairly good Tag Team Elimination match, but was still clunky shall we say. There was a vast difference in kind of skill and experience with the women involved in the match and it was clear who was kind of having to carry the load for other people. Obviously Bailey and Sasha Banks won that match and will go down in history as the first ever WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. There was a fairly lacklustre feud that led into Fastlane with a match against Nia Jax and Tamina. And that was really only kind of set up to allow Beth Phoenix to be involved in the WrestleMania match because Nia and Tamina were kind of bringing her into the storyline by attacking her after the match. And then, as I said, we got the WrestleMania match with the Iconics in there as well, and the Iconics actually picked up the belts. Now that in itself isn't necessarily a bad decision, I've got nothing against the Iconics, and to be honest I haven't got anything against any of the women that have been involved in any of these matches, any of their performances really, I'm certainly not one to comment on any wrestler's ability within the ring, or even within the industry itself. My issue more is to do with the planning and the writing around it and just the kind of lack of foresight. Now the fact that the belts debuted just on an episode of Raw in a Moment of Bliss segment, yeah, we've seen those segments far too many times and they kind of wash over the audience quite easily. It was a nice surprise to see them there but kind of nothing more than that really. Then we kind of look into the build up to that Elimination Chamber match. On the Raw side of things we had qualification matches because we had enough women on that roster to kind of make a couple of weird Franken teams and pad it out a bit and have qualification matches. Whereas on the Smackdown side of things we got none of that because we just didn't have the women and we got people just declaring themselves in the match. Okay, well there's your first problem. You're trying to get six tag teams across both brands in this one match. So, on the SmackDown side of things, when you've only got three female tag teams, that's going to prove a little bit of an issue down the line. So it made sense keeping the storyline specifically over on the Raw side of things for the Fastlane pay-per-view. We can kind of push SmackDown to one side for a minute. But then obviously WrestleMania, we kind of need this big showpiece match. And a lot of people assumed that Bailey and Sasha Banks were going to be defending against a team from Raw, a team from SmackDown and a team from NXT. Because they did go down to NXT and declare that these belts were going to be defended on all brands. Cool. Okay, that's lovely. Bring some of those women up to Raw and SmackDown. We could get surprise appearances from Bailey and Sasha Banks on NXT as well. Perhaps even on TakeOver matches if the pay-per-view card is getting a little bit full. Lovely. We could work out maybe a couple of um, embryonic teams, shall we say, on NXT and see if they kind of work together on the TV show, if it connects bring in the tag champions and yeah let them see what they can do on a bigger stage against established competition 
but not even really two months into their reign, Bailey and Sasha Banks were ousted as champions and the Iconics have taken over. Now, the Iconic shtick has never been that of the best performers in ring. They are very much more based on character work. And straight after WrestleMania, they brought in a pair of jobbers and they kind of padded out this fake history of how brilliant this tag team were. And they were able to kind of easily best them. Perfect for their character. It keeps the belts on TV. It keeps them prominent. It shows how valued the Iconics think the belts are. Perfect. Then we fast forward a week. They lose a tag team match against a Franken team of Bailey and a debuting Naomi in the Superstar Shake-Up. That's a bit weird. And then over on the SmackDown side of things, they're involved in an eight women tag match where they're pairing with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, another established tag team. And they're facing off against Bailey and Ember Moon, who have just moved over from Raw. They're not a team. And Asuka and Kairi Sane, who has just come up from NXT. They've only just been put together as a team, so they haven't really got proven track record yet. And yes, you've got three new stars on there, and the other one is a former SmackDown Women's Champion. But not only did they lose, but they actually took the pin. We then fast forward to this week. And Billy Kay loses a singles match on Raw, and Peyton Royce loses a singles match on SmackDown. Way to make your champions feel special. Now, as I said, they're not kind of in for prolific in-ring ability, but there are two of them. They are heels. They are best friends with each other. They know tricks, and they can be kind of schneidy and distract the referee, use weapons get count-out victories, things like that, to make them still be important. If they're involved in eight women tag matches, don't have them take the pin. And on top of that, the Superstar Shake-Up has absolutely decimated the women's tag team division. Before SmackDown, on the Raw side of things, we had Bailey and Sasha Banks as a team, Nia and Tamina as a team, the Riot Squad were a team, and Asuka and Mickey James, although they hadn't been involved in ring for a little while, they were a tag team that were in the kind of qualifying matches for the Elimination Chamber. And they have been closely associated with each other for a very long time. On the SmackDown side of things, we had the Iconics. We had Carmella teaming up with Naomi very recently. And before that, Naomi was teaming up a lot with Asuka before Asuka won the SmackDown title. And of course, we had Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Fast forward to now, on the SmackDown side of things, Naomi has moved across to Raw, so she cannot team with Carmella or Asuka. On the Raw side of things, We've lost Liv Morgan from the Riot Squad because she's gone over to SmackDown Live. Yes, we've still got Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan, but Ruby Riot was kind of always the leader of the group and didn't really feel like a tag team component. It would have made more sense to move her over to SmackDown and keep the other two together as a tag team. Mickey James has moved over to SmackDown Live as well, breaking up that partnership with uh. Mickey James. Bailey has moved over to SmackDown, breaking up her partnership with Sasha Banks. Nia is currently out injured, which obviously puts that partnership with Tamina on ice. Granted, they couldn't have foreseen that, but it is another problem that has occurred. Yes, Kairi Sane has been brought up from NXT to tag with Asuka, but that kind of just feels forced together. Whereas on NXT, Kairi Sane actually had a tag team partner with Io Shirai as the Sky Pirates. So down on NXT, the only viable tag team at the moment really is Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne. When they return from injury, I'm sure we will see Tegan Knox teaming up with Dakota Kai. And we do have Marina Shafir and Jasmine Duke as well. They have been involved in some tag team matches, certainly on live shows, but not really that much established on NXT programming. They're more just kind of muscle for Shayna Baszler rather than as an established tag team of themselves. Maybe they will be going forward. So across all three brands, we're getting very, very thin on numbers and no one really to challenge the Iconics. 
I'm presuming we're going to keep things over on the SmackDown side of things and possibly see a program between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville facing off against Asuka and Kyrie Sane. Whether this leads to a number one contendership for Money in the Bank, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they'll kind of put it off and do that thing at Extreme Rules instead. But beyond that, one of those teams, and it will probably be Kyrie and Asuka because having a heel team versus a heel team is just a little bit weird. Once they have faced the Iconics, they either lose to the Iconics and logically would go to the back of the line, or they beat the Iconics and are we just going to have these two teams perpetually moving the belt backwards and forwards forever until we can kind of cobble together some more Franken teams like Ember Moon and Bailey, or Naomi and Alexa Bliss or something. I, yeah, maybe you think I'm being a bit too dramatic. Maybe you see that there is a plan in place and you can see some of these other teams working together. But at the moment, I feel like the whole division is kind of sinking. It's not even treading water at the moment. It seems to be fighting against the current and its head is dipping below the surface of the water. Please let me know what your thoughts are about the division in the comments below. I would be very interested to see your thoughts and strike up a bit of a conversation about this. You can also find me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly and on Facebook at ThatBritishGuy86. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, please give the channel a subscribe. Till next time though, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.